Hello and welcome to Tech Deals RTX 2060 Comparison Part 2 Benchmark Time. I have noise test, temperature test, overclocking tests on six different RTX 2060 cards. The first video where we unboxed these and covered all of their features in detail and did an RTX 2060 launch review, that's linked down in the video description below. This time I put them all on my test bench which you can see right here and I'm going to show you side by side performance comparisons of all six of these cards. Which RTX 2060 should you buy? We're going to answer that in today's video. Now before we get started with benchmarks, I want to talk a little bit about the benchmark platform that I use to test all of these cards. This here is my Intel test bench. It has an i9-9900K running at a fixed 5 GHz clock speed. 16 GB of DDR4, 3200 MHz RAM, CL14, it's the good stuff. We have a Samsung 970 Pro SSD for a boot drive and then a two terabyte SATA SSD with all the games actually installed on it. So basically there's nothing inhibiting performance to allow all these cards to run as well as possible. Now this is an open air test bench and it's important to note that the temperature in the room when I tested these was 72 degrees Fahrenheit. And so when you look at all the temperatures, keep in mind that they're being tested in an air conditioned room and on an open air test bench. If you have a mid tower or larger case with reasonably decent airflow, one or two intake fans, one or two exhaust fans in an air conditioned room, you should get similar results to what you're about to see here. If you do not have an air conditioned room or you have a very small cramped case with poor airflow, your temperatures may be higher. Now for the testing today, I'm going to show you both the recorded gameplay footage or the recorded benchmark footage and then I'm going to show you some charts. Oh boy, do I have a lot of charts for you. As I said, noise, temperature, clock speed, overclocking, that's all coming. There's only one game being shown today and that's Shadow of the Tomb Raider. The point here is not to show the overall performance of these cards relative to anything else other than each other. It's meant to show how well does the single fan EVGA work against the three fan Gigabyte or against the two fan Zotac. So it's designed to show differences between the cards, not absolute performance. Benchmarks comparing the RTX 2060 to a GTX 1060, RX 590, a Vega 56, those will be coming up soon and those will contain far more games. But only one game is necessary today to show you the difference between these cards. Linked down in the video description below, in addition to the first video on the 2060, you will also find links to all six of these cards specifically to both Amazon and Newegg, as well as all the RTX 2060s and the 20 uh, line in general. Those are affiliate links, they do support the channel. None of these cards were provided by any of these manufacturers. I did actually buy all of these cards. So if you like this content and you want to see more of these roundups and comparisons, please consider supporting the channel by using those links when shopping. And now the first thing I want to show you is a single run of the Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark, but I'm not going to tell you just yet which card is being shown. I want you guys to try to guess. Then I'm going to put all six up on the screen at the same time and see if you can pick out the differences and then I will label them and then we'll talk about that some more. So here we are with our mystery run. I actually started this earlier. It was long enough. I decided to move it forward and put it up there so this video doesn't become unnecessarily long, even though I'm famous for it. Which card is this? Does it even matter? Look at the clock speed, temperatures, and fan speed. This is one of the six cards on the desk but can you tell which one it is? I'll show you here in just a second, but first I'm gonna put them all side by side so that you can see all the results from all the MSI Afterburner runs together. Part of the reason I'm showing you this here full screen with just one run is I want you to get an idea of the detail, the frame rate, the quality, the, the, the image, what to expect. Because when I put all six on the screen, you won't be able to see it. I'm not gonna shrink them down to physically fit six on the screen because then you couldn't read the text. Instead, I've trimmed them so you can see the real-time MSI afterburner numbers, but all you're going to see is the upper one-sixth of each screen moved around the screen. So you won't actually be able to see the benchmark itself. I probably will not show you the entire run simply because it would be too long and I'm again trying to keep this short, but I want to show you part of the benchmark run. Then I'm going to put the labels on the screen so you can see which is which. 
Here are all six benchmarks on the screen at the same time in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. The challenge for you is, can you tell the difference between these six runs? Is there in fact any noticeable difference? Look at the temperatures on the first line of each one. That's the temperature of the RTX 2060. Look at the fan RPM as reported by the card. Look at the clock speed of each card. Look at the frame rate and the amazing smoothness, all things considered, of each card. Now, there are some differences here that may be readily apparent to some of you. The top two lines, for example, are over 1800 RPM on their fans, and they're about 68 degrees Celsius. If we come all the way down to the bottom of the screen, you'll see the fans are turning much slower, 15 to 1600 RPM, actually less than 1500 on the bottom right-hand corner. And then the temperatures are a bit lower as well, 62 and 58 degrees Celsius, respectively. But as far as the clock speeds go, notice those aren't really different. The upper left-hand corner is 1890 megahertz. The bottom right-hand corner is 1905 megahertz. And everything else is pretty much in between. Actually, the top right is the slowest at 1845. But all things considered, these are rounding errors. Now, some of you might be asking, wait a minute, didn't you say in part one of this, didn't you say when you unbox these that some of these cards were 150 megahertz faster than others? Yes, I did. That is the rated guaranteed boost speed provided by the manufacturers. However, however NVIDIA has for a while now provided something called GPU boost. NVIDIA cards auto overclock themselves. So you can add a plus something to their clock speed, a plus 100, plus 200. But you, unlike AMD cards, you don't just type in a specific clock speed for them to run at. So even though some of these cards are reference speeds at 1680 uh, megahertz, and then some of these are factory overclocked at 1830 megahertz, notice it makes exactly zero difference. There is zero manual overclocking going on right here. I'll show you some in just a minute, but there is no manual overclocking here whatsoever. If you take a look at the actual frame rates, you will notice they are effectively the same. If you take anything away from this video, I want you to take this one point. When it comes to NVIDIA cards, performance-wise, it generally does not matter which one you buy. All NVIDIA cards, regardless of manufacture, generally run about the same performance. Temperatures, noise, and fan speed vary, but the actual performance of the card doesn't thanks to GPU boost. Here are the card names next to their respective benchmarks. How many did you guess correct? Some of you would have already guessed the ROG Strix is on the bottom right due to its very low temperature and fan speed. It is the most expensive card here, but notice that it's not any faster than the other cards. Well, it's one or two. I'll show you the benchmark chart here in just a second, but in terms of actual performance, there's no effective difference between these cards. I mean, one frame per second is not noticeable when you're talking about performance like this. But what is no noticeable is temperature and noise from the fans. Now, there's a little bit of an overclocking difference, but not a huge one. I'll show you an overclocking chart here in just a second. But if nothing else, as I said, it's not a performance difference. It's a fan speed, noise, and temperature difference that you really should be looking for when picking your card. Honest question time. How many of you were able to tell which card was which one in that test? Now that you've seen the labels, now that you've seen which is which, is there a huge difference between them? Well, there is and there isn't. You might have noticed that one of those was a little bit better than the others. Gee, I wonder which. But let's take a look at some charts specifically laying out fan speed, temperature, noise, and some overclocking results. And let's take a closer look. The first chart is the fan RPM as reported by the cards. Needless to say, the ROG Strix is the lowest, but the Gigabyte Gaming G1 is not far behind. Surprisingly, the MSI Ventus was the highest, and we'll talk about noise here in a minute. But if you want the lowest fan RPM speed and or the highest room for overclocking by increasing fan speed, well, get a three fan card. That brings us to clock speed. Now, as noted in the first video and earlier in this video, some of these cards have a 1680 megahertz advertised boost speed. And then of course you have cards like the Asus ROG Strix and the gaming one that advertise 1830. None of these cards run at those speeds. And as you can see here, GPU boost does an excellent job of getting all of these cards up to a very similar clock speed.
Now as for noise, I did use a sound meter at the same location a few inches from each card to determine the noise. I was very surprised to discover the Gaming G1 was the quietest card here, not just objectively, but subjectively as well. If I had to name which one to my ears testing all of these cards was the quietest, it really was the Gaming G1. The ROG Strix was cooler running, the fan was slower turning, but it was louder, it had a pitch to it that was more audible than the gaming. The Gigabyte ITX was awful, it was very loud and very annoying. The Black, while the noise decibels rated at 52, was a quite pleasing sound. Decibel is just a measure of sound pressure. It's not necessarily a reflection of how audible something is to the human ear. I do have to say that the ranking of the decibel rating here is not necessarily the ranking I personally would put the cards. I've updated the chart with my own opinion based upon the harshness or softness of the pitch. Between the single fan cards, the Gigabyte was a harsh pitch. It was not pleasant at all. The EVGA was amazingly pleasant in terms of its pitch. I would buy the EVGA single fan black. The Zotac was a softer pitch than the MSI card. Even though it was three decibels louder, the Zotac was a nicer sound, and I would buy the Zotac over the MSI Ventist based upon the pitch of the sound rather than the decibel rating of the sound. And then yes, I would buy the Gaming G1 over the Asus ROG Strix based upon sound. It was a much nicer sound, virtually silent. The Asus ROG Strix, while not obnoxious, was not as quiet and not as pleasant as the Gigabyte card. That brings us to temperatures. If you watch the various benchmarks I've shown in this video, this should be no surprise to you. The Asus ROG Strix was by far the coolest running card. The Gigabyte Gaming G1 was not far behind. Interestingly enough, with its plastic backplate, the MSI Ventus was the hottest card here. The two single fan cards were pretty respectable and the Zotac was pretty nice as well. If you've got the room, gig get the Gigabyte Gaming G1. And if you want something a little bit shorter and smaller, get the Zotac. Average frame rate varied between 90 and 92 frames per second, and these were very consistent runs. I ran these tests more than three times each on every single card to make sure they were consistent. The Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark is very repeatable, and the results do not vary by much. Yes, the Asus ROG Strix is the fastest card here, by an entire one frame per second. Who cares? That is a completely trivial difference that you will never ever notice. Effectively, these cards are the same performance. For my money, the Gigabyte Gaming G1 with its ultra low temperatures, low fan speed, low noise, and fast running nice card would be my first choice. And then either the EVGA Black or the Zotac would be my two follow-ups based upon those same parameters. And then just for completeness, here are the minimum frame rates, 70 and 71. Nothing surprising here, very consistent across the board. No benchmark comparison would be complete without the maximum frame rate, 150 to 151 to 152. Again, no real difference. Now what about overclocking, you say? This requires some explanation. These are only the triple fan cards. The differences between all of them are very minor, so I'm showing you the triple fans to show you what they can do. The stock performance is at the top. The Gigabyte Gaming G1 and the Asus ROG Strix, that is the average frame rate stock on those two cards. When you put a plus 150 onto the two cards, you get a gain from 91 to 94 on the Gigabyte and from 92 to 96 on the Asus ROG Strix. The temperature and fan speed are not affected in a large way. They go up a little bit. It is not a major difference. The noise is also not a big increase as well. There is a little bit maybe, but not much. Maybe one decibel at most. It's a very, very minor difference. What's interesting is the Asus ROG Strix has an overclock BIOS. There is a switch on top of the card that you can switch to put the card into a higher performance mode. It does add performance. Not much, but it does. You can see here the overclock BIOS at stock settings without anything changed is 93 frames per second. 
With the overclock BIOS and a plus 100 added to MSI Afterburner, we have 97 frames per second. Now in fairness, I will grant you that 91 frames per second on a stock gaming G1 to 97 frames per second on an overclock BIOS with a plus 100 on the ASUS ROG Strix is in fact a difference. That is six frames per second, but it's a more expensive card running in a louder fan configuration overclocked with an additional overclock and the fans are audible in that configuration and honestly, are you really going to tell the difference between 91 and 97 frames per second? No, oh, maybe, but I think that's a pretty small difference. If you, if you, Unless you really just want the ROG Strix branding, the money you spend on that card would buy you a basic Gigabyte triple fan RTX 2070, which is definitely faster than any of these cards. Same chart as before, but minimum frame rate. Top two numbers are the stock for the three fan cards, then the plus 150 in the middle for the yellow, and then just the ROG Strix with the overclock BIOS in stock and plus 100 GPU. You can do this yourself if you have an NVIDIA card, open up MS Afterburner, click on the GPU number, put a plus 50, plus 150, plus 100. You can try different settings. I will tell you that plus 200 did not work on any of the cards. 150 did, 200 did not. And then here's the max FPS on the overclocked configurations. Yes, there's a 10 frame per second difference in max between the stock gaming G1 and the overclocked BIOS plus 100 GPU typed in. Fair enough, take it for what it's worth. I'm not convinced it's worth it, but that's certainly your choice if you wanna mess around with it. Interestingly enough, the actual clock gains of the overclock BIOS on the ROG Strix was 100 megahertz. It raised it up to 2000 megahertz. The plus 100 raised it to 21. But when I had the non-overclock BIOS selected and tried to put in a plus 200, the card failed. So I don't know if it's increasing voltage or changing something else, but I was able to get 2100 megahertz out of the ROG Strix with the overclock BIOS, but I was not able to get 2100 megahertz out of the ROG Strix by just manually increasing an MSI afterburner without using the overclock BIOS switch. Well, there you have it. That's a ton of benchmarks to look at. I hope that was interesting, informative, useful, or perhaps just entertaining for you. If it was my money that I was spending based upon what I know right now after using these cards, I would buy the EVGA Black, I would buy the Zotac Dual Fan, or I would buy the Gigabyte Gaming Triple Fan card. As nice as this is, the RGB doesn't mean too much to me, and it was not as quiet as that Gigabyte. That really surprised me, but the fans were not as nice as the Gigabyte fans. The Zotac was very nice. The MSI was a little bit louder, had a little bit harder, harsher pitch to it. And then to be completely blunt, the Gigabyte ITX, while it is small and compact, it was loud and not very nice to listen to. If you have no other choice, fair enough, but otherwise, skip that card. Like this video if you like it, share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with the big huge red button directly below. Questions, comments, thoughts, feedback, suggestions in the comments section below. Check those links in the video description. A link to the first video unboxing these cards in great detail. Links to Amazon and Newegg for all of these cards. Those are affiliate links. It does support this channel. I would greatly appreciate it so I can bring you more of these. And then also my social media links are down there as well. Twitter, Twitch, and the Tech Deals Discord for supporters. If you're a member here on YouTube, hit that join button next to the subscribe button if you'd like to support the channel directly. Or on Floatplane or Patreon, we have a member Discord that you can come join us on as well. Thank you so much for watching. I will see all of you next time.